Happy New Year to all followers of uh, Nebu TV. I'm particularly very excited when I'm being requested to talk about my history. Uh, it's a look be to all Edo section of Nebu TV's follower. Um, Obviously, my name is um, Imazwana Mowe Zodua. I was requested by Nebo TV to do something on Prince Dinoa. Having faith that um, there are quite some few misconceptions about uh, Dinoa as a person. And um, I feel that the history of Genoa should be elaborately talked about. Um, a lot of persons are in different school of thoughts. For those who do not know who Prince Genoa was or is, Prince Genoa became the first Olu or Wari or better still, Ogiame of Wari people, the first king of the Shekiri people. Um, before the advent of uh, uh, what led to Genoa uh, living Benin for, uh, for present day Wari, uh, a lot of persons have misinterpreted it as it's because of the counsel he gave to his father that he was supposed to be the next of our Benin. With or without can that cancel, I can guarantee you, listening, that um, Genoa wouldn't have been the of our Benin with or without that cancel. I will state it very clear. The Benin people uh, our type of monarchy has changed over the years. First, it was primogenital that the first three Ogisos experienced. Ogiso Igodo, Ogiso E, and Ogiso Orire. Um, after which, it switched to a gerontocratic rulership or kingship. We are the oldest in different, in the 33 quarters of Benin. We have been given the privileges to mount the ancient throne of the Ogisos. After which, about um, 19 of them were gerocratic kings, Ogisos. It switched back to primogeniture. That was when it uh, transmuted into the Obership. But at the, by the time it got to Oba Ohe, whose four children became, they all became the Oba of Benin. The last of the sons of Oba Ohe, who became the Oba of Benin, was uh, Prince Ogun. Who eventually became Obaewai the first. He wanted to revert that kingship to primogenitor, first surviving son of the Oba of Benin, becoming the Oba of Benin. Um, however, a tragedy struck. His first son and his second son, they both had the mindset of becoming the Oba someday. So two of them fought, Kobo Iwa, who was the first son, and Izuwara, and died the same day. Because of that pain and agony, Obaiwaina said that, if I have other children, all of them must become the Oba of Benin. So, he, he because three other children, aside the first two who died the same day. Ezoti being the first, Olua being the second, 
and Prince Okpame, who eventually became Obaozolwa, being the third. Now, there was already a law put down by Obaiwai the first that the four of his children, three of his children, will all become the Obaabinin, so as to quell that competitiveness. And it became a rotational kingship, just like how it got to him in the first place. So, Ezotzi became the first, who was the first among the three surviving sons of, um, of, um, of Baiwai the first. Became the first Oba after the Obaiwai the first sojourned to the land of ancestors. And so he eventually died. 14 days later because he's recorded to be the shortest lived Oba. I'm not going to go through what led to his death, but history remembers him to be the shortest lived of all the Obas. All right. After which, um, it got to the town where, where there was a contemplation that Azoti's son, Owe, should be giving the opportunity of becoming the Obarabinim. But people remembered that it cannot be Owe. All right? It has, there was already a law that all the three children of Obaiwai must become the Oba. And not his grandchild when his children are still alive. So he now got to the turn of Oba Olua. Obaala had about two sons. About two sons. I can't really remember the second. They're quite popular. One of the founders of one of the uh, kingdoms in present day Delta State. But his first son was Jinua. Now, something you must understand about Obaolua. Obaolua in Benin history is remembered to be the most humble and the most kind hearted of all Benin Obas till date. Very humble, very, very kind hearted. In short, it is enshrined in our classical parables that Abi Ninonwa always saving our loa. That is someone that is humble to a fault, someone that is kind hearted to a fault. Well, uh, those characteristics, in real sense, does not befit a number. Of Benin, because an Oba of Benin must be seen to be very tough. He wasn't tough, he was just humble. Because of that, people disrespected him, both the nobles and the commoners. They disrespected him. They weren't looking up to him as an Oba. He was an Oba that was so kind hearted that um, he sees every man as equal. Well, a lot of persons would have said, would have argued that where well, that is good, it's good to be humble. But as a king, uh, there is a level of humility a king must have. His own was extraordinary. It wasn't befitting of a king of Benin because a, B a Benin king must be seen to, to be very tough. He must be seen to be taking some very, some very critical decisions that affect positively the kingdom. So he was just stereotypically, uh, how would I put it? Stereotypically very humble and kind hearted. So he was humble to a fault and kind hearted to a fault. So the people at all times disrespected his kind heartedness. You know who the Benin are now? Uh, we are tough as a people. We are republican in nature. So he takes, he takes a tough order to be able to put us in, to put us to check us in place, it has always been so. It takes a tough orbit. Now, this wasn't a tough orbit at all. It's below, 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 below a tough orbit. So, what would you expect? It was disrespected by his people. And at a point in time, he, he, he became frustrated as a king that with all his good acts, with all his humble acts to his people, how can he be looked down upon as a common and not the Obar of Benin? So, he seeked. The counsel of someone he knows that would never ever lie to him, which was Prince Jinua. This was Prince Jinua. 
And when Prince Genoa came, he simply advised his father that if he was the Oba, all those notable chiefs that have come up publicly to make mockery of him, he's going to execute all of them. Which is a fair thing to do as an Oba. Which is a fair thing. He wasn't, Genoa wasn't the first person to have that thought. Oba Voramen, they were forces that challenged a prince Idubowa of becoming the Oba of Benin. When he eventually became Oba Voramen, he, he sentenced them to death a few weeks after he was crowned the Oba because these people are antagonists to his reign as a king. So it is applicable everywhere that once you given the mandate of becoming a leader of a people and there are people who are sworn to antagonize you till they are grave. The only way you can really succeed is to, is to find a way of displacing them. In a, in a modern scenario, in a modern scenario, you cannot kill these people because you do not have that power. The Lord is in a power way, but you must find every possible means of, uh, of ensuring that they are no longer a stumbling block to your successful reign. So exactly what was applicable in the areas even before Olwa. For example, Ozolwa. When eventually Ozolwa became the Oba of Benin, he had about 16 authorities who fought wars with his father over Tony Giduma, Akenisi, Nekrigidi, Nogbelaka. There were so many, about 16 of them. So, the only way he could have a total control of his vast empire was to make do, was to find a way of checkmating the excesses of these warlords, and which he exactly, exactly did. Every about every time, had to find a way of um, taking out antagonist, which was exactly the counsel Prince Genoa gave to his father. It wasn't it was even Prince, even Ewai, the grandfather of Prince Genoa, did the same when he was denied of the throne of his father. He protested. He had to, he had to kill his younger brother who served the throne. And he had to burn a, a, a half section of the entire Benin city to protest that he is supposed to be the Oba of Benin. And some of the people, uh, even Obaisege did the same. Uh, no, it was Obaiwai the first that he did the same. Some the people who conspired in killing his father, most especially Juzama, the, the kingmakers, he, he sentenced all of them to death when he became the Oba of Benin because they antagonized and conspired to kill his father when a regicide was committed. The, the first and the only time regicide was ever committed in Benin. So when Ewai became the Oba, he, he, he took, he had to sentence all of them to death and replacing them with their sons. So there are drastic measures that are needed to be taken as a king. Uh, some was too tough, some were not that tough. But Genoa knew that the only way his father can command the respect he, he truly deserves is to place some of these lauded antagonists to death. That does not make him any wicked. It was a counsel that he gave to his father that, that, uh, that is expected as a king in taking tough decisions against uh, uh, felonies or, or, or those who have, uh, who have acted treasonably. Uh, eventually, the... Others got to hear of the counsel of Genoa that he gave to his father, Obaolwa. So they became afraid. Instead, they told his father, according to what a lot of historians wrote, that they told his father that there is no way your son, Genoa, can become the Oba of Benin. All right? Because of the counsel he gave to you. But I put it to listeners that it was not the it was not the resolve of the chiefs that denied Prince Junoa to become the Oba of Benin. It was the law, Iyi, 
that his grandfather had already placed that all his children must become the Oba of Benin before his grandchildren. So, Jinua was a grandchild of Ewai, and Olua was, a, was one of the sons of Ewai I. Now, don't forget, Olua had a younger brother, which is Prince Obame, who eventually became Oba Ozolua. So, it, there was already a standing law that is going to be a rotational kingship. All my children must become the Oba. So, it was not really the resolve of the chiefs that Olua, that Jinua would not become the Oba, being that actually allowed that tell on his father to allow his son to go and seek his own kingdom. Okay? So, people must get that clear. So eventually, Olua discovered that his son is also a born king by level of uh, being the first surviving son of the sitting king, Olua. So he decided to say, okay, you go and be a king. According to Ayomike, one of the foremost Ishekiri um, historian, he referred to uh, Jinua as a uh, a duke, all right. But however, whether as at that time Jinua left Benin to establish what you now call Wari Kingdom, it was not. It might have been in the prospect of a dukedom, but obviously Wari Kanon is no longer a dukedom. Is a one of the biggest kingdoms in Nigeria in this part of the world, and we are very damn proud of it. That is a clear historical offshoot. Of Benin Kingdom. So eventually, when Jinua was living, his father sent a lot of cultures, emissaries, and most importantly, he sent 70 sons of the 70 chiefs of Benin to accompany him. So that means 70 sons of the chiefs of Benin and Jinua were the nobles. That means it was. 71 nobles among several other commoners that left Benin to establish a kingdom beside the water. So the original name or title that the Benins, that Olua gave to his son was Oba Noregbame Ogi Noregbame Ogiame. Ugyame is a pure Benin word, which is the original title of the kings of Wari. So the present king of Wari is Ugyame. Kenwoli Ugi is, is king. I've explained it. I've explained that Oba is a god king. Then Ugi is king in Benin. So then Ame is water. So the king beside the water. So he asked him to go and establish beside the water which he eventually did all right so uh he had other children he meant some people notably some said he jaw he meant some jaw where he had irame ijijen some of his children i don't want i think the shakiri should be better equipped to now relate that they are part of the version of the history of the soul journey of uh of um uh, of um Genoa to Odeh Shakiri and all that. So, he eventually got there and got established. But, strikingly, his father regretted that decision of Baolo of sending his son to be a king beside of the water because he felt that, uh, why would I send my son away when he has the possibility of becoming the Obar of Benin? Not because of the resolve of the chiefs, but because truly, if he's ordained to become the Oba of Benin, he can be Oba of Benin. So he now sent Benin troops to follow him to go and bring his son back. He sent Benin troops to go and bring his son. That that troops was headed by a man, a warrior called Ekbenede. Ekbenede was the head of that troop. I was asked that was uh, asked to go and retrieve 
uh, Prince Gino and every other children because the chiefs protested that why would the Oba send their children without their consultation along with his son. So they protested. So it was almost a mini, uh, a mini war in Benin. So the only best possible way was uh, some troops were charged by the Oba to go and bring back those 17 sons of the 70 chiefs in Benin and Genoa back to Benin. But when they eventually got there, Genoa already loved his new abode. He, a war broke out between the Benin warriors and the Genoa warriors. Eventually, um, Genoa warriors were able to repel some of these warriors that came from Benin. So eventually, Benedict could not Eventually, Ebenede could not return back to Benin. So he now formed his settlement with his warriors. And that settlement today is in, is in Wari, and it is called Okere Community. The head of it is Ogyobo. Is the head of that Okere Community. I think it's Ogyobo. I met, I met with a man two years ago. So the Okere people in worry they are purely benign people you know it is good we put our history very beautifully very well uh, we are not saying that the shakiri people are benign people obviously genoa met people at worry meant people at a place now called worry kingdom that probably they are ishakiri people uh, some of them traces their ancestry to Ijebu. So Shekiris are more of Yorubas. But the royalty and the nobles are proudly Benin people, which I have explained why and how they are proudly Benin people. So the Benin people in Wari Kingdom is the royal family. The nobles, these sons of these chiefs, as well as the courtiers that follow them, then the Okere people are children of Ekbenede. Till date, they are ascribed as Ekbenede. I think the street leading to the Okere community is called Ekbenede Street or so. So I've been there. I've met with uh, their, their leader. I think his name is Ogyobo. Ogyobo. Yeah. So um, let's get our history right. Uh, let's do it more on what uh, connect us and strengthen us as a people rather than what divide us. So I'm, I'm thankful that I'm able to relieve that Genoa was not a wicked prince or was not the cancer that he gave his father was not wicked. Except people really do not understand Benin history because it is expected for a king to be tough. Being that his father was not tough and that's why a donado muefu. So he told his father that if I become the Alba Rabini, this is what I would do. And that is the only way you have. That the general population is stubborn Benin society with disrespect any Alba that is not tough. We are too stubborn as a people. I'm, I must agree. So it, it takes a tough Alba to be able to oversee the affairs of uh, the Benin people, because we are highly republican by nature, if not because God created a monarchy that ties us together. Otherwise, uh, man, I don't know what would have become us if we don't have a central place that we all look forward to because we are too opinionated about things. We are too republican. We, we have... Benin does not, by nature, are not born followers. They don't like being following other people they're just like leading imagine a, a city a kingdom where almost everybody's ascribing himself as leaders and they are belly followers so they, it, it's like a time bomb so it took the it took the grace of god almighty to foresee that these people are, with this their leadership strength of not being followers that um, they have to have a unique monarchical system that binds them. So the monarch, the Benin monarch, is like the gum that cement, that glooms every of his indigents together 
otherwise would have been time bomb so i thank all of you for listening to this very short <laughs> historical analysis of prince genoa and all that he represent so we are thankful and we are grateful that um, till date they still recognize the olua worry still recognize is beneath ogiame suo obaga tokbe you say